Okay, we've had our little intro to Mr. Darwin. We've had a little section out of his book. Now we're going to talk about the two main ideas within the theory of evolution. And we've already listed them in your reading right before this video. What was one? Descent with modification. What's the other? Natural selection. Descent with modification, natural selection. Now, were both of those Mr. Darwin's original ideas? No. Which one was his original idea? The second one. And so this book is about natural selection. Uh, but it's also about descent with modification. Uh, even though that wasn't Mr. Darwin's original idea, uh, what did this book accomplish? Well, it uh, basically wiped out the prevailing idea of the time, which was the exact opposite of descent with modification. It was called fixity of species. Fixity of species. What does that mean? That idea? The idea that species are fixed. They never change. That was the prevailing idea of most folks, including scientists, at the time Darwin originally published this book. And so he had many dissenters among the scientific community, as well as uh, perhaps, say, the religious community. And so one thing that Mr. Darwin's book did then is he uh, took the idea of fixing his species and basically smashed it to a pulp. He took the prevailing idea and turned it basically into nobody's idea. And so uh, uh, some of you are thinking, uh, I think I believe that. Uh, well, you know, okay, he, 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 believe anything that you want to, that's, that's fine. Uh, I think you'll find that even the most ardent creationists, if you study into it, the most ardent creationists are pushing fixed of species. No, they're not. They're, uh, uh, they're, uh, they accept a certain amount of descent with modification, uh, even the most ardent creationists. We'll talk about that later when we do our little origins analysis. But descent with modification, that's what this little video is about. And so uh, the way this occurs, or the pattern that it takes, I call it the pattern of evolution, takes the form of tree diagrams. And so here we have the first tree diagram. We're just going to go in order through the book and uh, say, what is this all about? Well, let's find out. But well, we do see kind of a tree-like pattern here with branches. That's all I put that in here for. But now with this diagram, the second one on the list, we have an idea of what these diagrams represent. Uh, what does the caption call this diagram? It calls it a family tree. And so, um, uh, and we know what family trees are about. Some of you have maybe a relative that's put together a family tree uh, showing you and your parents and your grandparents and your cousins and maybe going back several generations. It takes a lot of work to do that, but some people uh, have those types of family trees. And, um, and so, uh, uh, who's most closely related, by the way, on those family trees? Well, I think it's those with whom you share what? The most recent common ancestor, is that right? For example, you and your full siblings. You share a common ancestor if you have full siblings. Who is that? It's your parents. The tree doesn't go back very far before it comes together with you and your parents. Now, you may have first cousins that you know about. Why are they your first cousins? Well, the tree comes together, but not at your parents. The tree comes together a little farther back in time, does it not? Uh, your first cousins are your first cousins because you have the same what? Same grandparents. Well, that's what this is about. We have a uh, time scale to the left here. And uh, the top of the uh, tree, the way this one's set up, is which time? The present time. As we go down the tree, we're going, what? Back in time, back in time. And so the uh, horizontal axis... Uh, we can say that that is a weak, a very weak representation of variation. In other words, these things, there's some variation as you look across this. And so why is it a weak representation? Because this is uh, just a one-dimensional uh, one uh, change across, you know, as we go left and right, that's just one dimension. Variation is a lot more than just one dimension. But anyway, let's look at this tree. What does it represent? It represents a family tree represents an idea about relationship. And, uh, for example, seals are related to walruses, according to this. And uh, what does this represent here for seals and walruses? The common ancestor of seals and walruses. And so, are seals more closely related to walruses or to sea lions, according to this diagram? Well, gee, I think it'd be walruses. Why is that? Because 
uh, the tree comes together quicker for seals and walruses, you have to go back farther in time to find the what? The common ancestor of sea lions and seals that's farther back in time. So, uh, these are trees expressing the idea of relationship. Descent with modification, making everything on this tree relatives. And the same thing here, nothing too new. Uh, what we do have something on here that's a little different. We have little, little characteristics plotted on the tree. What do those represent? Those represent characteristics believed to have evolved along the branches of the tree. For example, here we have mammary, mammary glands. Nothing before that has mammary glands. Everything after it does. And so this characteristic is believed to have evolved along that branch on the tree. What in the world is this? Oh my goodness, it's, it's, not, a, it's not as tree-like as it could be. The fact is I'm a little disappointed because the previous editions of the book had this version. So I'm going to use this version right here, which looks a lot more like a tree than this version. I like this one better. And uh, this is called the Universal Tree of Life. Uh, and so this concept of relationship and descent with modification includes what organisms, what species? Well, we see all six kingdoms on this tree, right? All six kingdoms. And so, uh, are uh, animals related to fungi, according to this concept? Yes, because if you go back far enough in what? If you go down the tree, you're going back in what? In time, at some point, you come to what? Where the branches come together is the what? The common ancestor of both animals and fungi. And so all things are related, because if you go back far enough in time, according to this concept, uh, at some point, the branches will come together. What's here at the base? of the tree, something called the universal ancestor. That means what? The ancestor of everything. According to this concept, all species are related by common ancestry. All species have developed by descent with modification. And so here's a, a evolution of plants diagram. Uh, nothing uh, particularly new about this. Let's move on to this one. Something a little bit new on this. And that is a branch that doesn't make it to the top of the tree. Well, what does the top of the tree represent? The way these are set up represents the present time. And so I guess a branch that doesn't make it to the top of the tree is something that does not exist in the present time. I guess something that has become what? Extinct. I guess dinosaurs would fit the bill on that. And uh, are people included in this concept? Uh, actually, I'm going to quickly move on to Professor Vesey version of this diagram. I thought that little lady was getting a little chilly there. Might be even be a little embarrassed if I put a dress on her. But are people included in this concept? Certainly, uh, uh, they certainly are. And so, according to this diagram, uh, humans are most closely related to what other organism on this tree? Chimpanzees. Does it say humans descended from chimpanzees? No, it says that humans and chimpanzees share a what? A common ancestor if you go back in time. And uh, humans are somewhat less related to gorillas, orangutans, and so forth. And so people are included in this concept of common ancestry descent with modification. And so the final one we're going to look at is this. Um, this is a tree with a lot of conjecture on it. I guess that's what these dotted lines mean. Uh, but what's this all about? Uh, well, uh, for one thing, we can see that only one branch makes it all the way to the top, although there's a couple close ones. And uh, that would be H. sapien. Who's an H. sapien? What is that? I think that would be us, right? What is our species name? Homo sapien. Yes, we're the only ones that made it to the top of the tree. Only one in this analysis here, in this tree diagram, that made it to the present time. A couple things just about made it, like this one over here, H. Neath Neanderthalensis, Neanderthal man. And uh, there's uh, evidence, genetic evidence, that people interacted with Neanderthals, but they are no longer on the Earth. And so everything on this diagram besides H. sapien is represented by what? Represented by fossils that people have found someplace? Yes, all represented by fossils. Again, how are these trees made? They're made on, based on certain inferences. So we don't have time to go into all that. I do have a laboratory exercise where uh, we develop evolutionary trees based on 
uh, some uh, basic principles and uh, uh, you can see where these trees in the book come from uh, based on how we do that lab. Alright, and so what's the big uh, picture diagram here? Common ancestry, descent with modification. Let's see if you've got the basic idea. Uh, I have a coleus plant here. Assuming this concept is correct, which let's assume it's correct, am, are we related to this coleus plant? Is this one of our, uh, I guess you could say one of our distant cousins? I think so. I think so. Let me give him a hug. Okay, being a little corny here, but uh, uh, what's the point the professor making? The professor is making this point that all species of life are related by common ancestry. Here's the plant kingdom branch. Coleus plants would be up in this branch. Here's the animal kingdom branch. We'd be up that way someplace. And so if you follow it back in time, at some point there would be a common ancestor of both people and coleus plants. Would there not? All species are related by um, common ancestry. All species have developed by descent with modification. That is one of the two major ideas in the concept or the theory of evolution.